Hey guys, welcome to another Thursday edition of the Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. My name is Nick. And this week I'm going to talk about something that uh, Ian and I kind of talked about uh, a couple of weeks back. And that's like the the state of rock music. So I'm going to do a little follow-up today. So if you haven't done so yet, make sure you click on the link down below and go check out our Facebook group. Also, make sure you give the episode the old thumbs up there and uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about three albums, two that are, you know, from unconventional musicians or unconventional rock musicians. And the third, I guess, is kind of unconventional also if you look at, like, the history of rock music. But um, So I'm going to talk, talk about three albums that maybe could kind of pave the way for a resurgence as far as, like, mainstream rock goes. If you haven't watched the video yet, I'll put a link above, but uh, a couple of weeks back, Ian and I were talking about where we think rock kind of went wrong over the last, you know, 10, 20, 25 years, whatever it is, and how it kind of fell out of the minds of mainstream music fans. I mean, I know a lot of people hate the, uh, the award shows nowadays, but if you go look at those award shows, those rock categories are normally like the pre-show uh, awards handed out or are handed out during commercials. You know, it's just, uh, it, it's interesting to see how far, uh, down the totem pole that rock music has fallen over the last, you know, decade or two. And, uh, that's kind of what the whole episode was about is it was about, you know, where it went wrong and what might, what, what it could do possibly in the future to kind of regain some of its market share. So one of my big points in that video was that rock music kind of lost its 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 it, it being fun. You know, it was no longer that kind of like fun type of music. And I know a lot of there, there's a good chunk of rock music that was never your 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 fun kind of party music. But I think it kind of lost its its edge with younger demographics because it really kind of took on this more serious tone in the mid two thousands. And I think kind of lost its edge where, you know, uh, hip hop, rap, R and B, electronic music kind of picked up that that torch, and and ran with it as being that like the 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 fun kind of music, the the music you're gonna put on at a party, or uh, you know, ride around in your truck and, and listen to it with your friends and have a good time. Uh, you know, I, like I said, it kind of took on too much of a serious tone. I think, and uh, a couple of albums I'm gonna talk about. All three of these albums came out in the last year. The first two of the the first two I'm going to talk about are ones that actually I talked about when we Ian and I did our top three albums of 2020. The first one is a band that's been around for a while, and I've I've enjoyed their other music, but their most recent album I think really kind of hit the mark as far as like having that fun kind of poppy rock music. And I know a lot of people kind of hate that term pop, and you know especially when it comes to rock music. And I, I'm just looking at it not so much as like it's just popular. It's just kind of like it fits that popular mo uh, the the form I think. But um, and I don't think I was really intentional with this band. It's just how their music came off. And this is an absolutely fantastic album. It's probably one of the better rock albums I think of the last ten years. And that's uh, Death in Venice Beach by the the Bomb Pops. And this is kind of an unconventional kind of band. Um, you know, a female punk band is not something you come across all the time, but, uh, they, this is a really fantastic album. And if you haven't checked it out, definitely make sure you do. I think this is kind of, well, like I said, one of those albums that can kind of pave the way to really bring rock music, maybe back a little bit more. Obviously I don't think it's ever going to return to its heyday where it was the dominant force that it was for, you know, 50 years, but I think it can definitely bite back and, and, and claw back and get some of that market share back. And I think this is one of those albums that could have really done that. The thing that really hurt this album was the pandemic. Uh, this album got released literally at the very beginning of all the lockdowns. I know the Bomb Pops had a series of shows lined up where they're going to do like album drops and things like that. And I think this album would have really got a lot more airplay. It would have been a much bigger album had it not been for, for the pandemic, unfortunately. Whereas the Bomb Pops are, are more like your kind of, I won't say traditional, but they're, you know, they're a rock band. They've been around for a while. The next two artists were albums I think really kind of came out of left field, at least for me. And the first one is... Tickets to My Downfall by uh, Machine Gun Kelly. This was, you know, Machine Gun Kelly is a rap, uh, a rap artist. You know, and he's, he was pretty well known. He had a uh, pretty big beef with Eminem uh, a couple years back. And then, so I know that uh, he grew up 
as a fan of of bands like Blink One Eighty Two and that uh, that early two thousands punk rock sound that uh, Blink is known for. And he teamed up with Travis Barker and wanted to create an album in that in that tone. And that's exactly what this album is. If you're a fan of of Blink, which just happens to be over my shoulder, uh, but uh, if you're a fan of their music, this is definitely an album that's worth checking out. You know, it's not an album that's going to blow your mind. It's not like it's not uh, Led Zeppelin Four or anything like that. But it's just a great, great overall rock album. And the thing that Machine Gun Kelly's tapped into is, you know, so he's he's got a popular name, obviously, from being because uh, being in in rap and like I said, the feud with Eminem. He, he's a well known person. And to go out and make an album like this, and now he's also got the uh, the movie that he did for the uh, for the album, which I haven't watched yet. I've watched it like the first five or ten minutes of it, you know. So there, there's other avenues he's trying to go down to reach more people. And I think this is another album that you know, had we not had a pandemic going a worldwide pandemic over the last year, I think this is an album that even though this reached number one on the Billboard charts, and you know, is still in the top thirty you know, several months later after it was released, it's it's an album that could have been a lot bigger had he been able to properly tour and do the a lot of the PR and things like that that, it, that it goes along with making an album. So the last album I'm going to talk about as far as, uh, you know, albums that or, or could kind of break the mold and, and kind of reshape what rock could be moving forward is another, you know, rap artist turned rock musician and uh you know and like i said i know our band, artists have tried to do it before i know i think the first one to come to, comes to my mind was uh little wayne's album i don't remember the name of it was but uh you know 10 years or so back he he did a rock album that uh <laughs> was not the best thing <laughs> to say the least uh, i had a couple of decent tracks on it but was not uh anywhere close to i think what machine gun kelly or the next artist that i'm going to talk about is done but um and this is an artist i didn't really know anything about until really about a month ago and it was after the album came out and i just kind of happened to stumble across it on apple music and as far as as far as i know i don't think there's any plans as of right now to either press us on CD or on vinyl, but I'd love to have a copy of both. I'll put a picture of it up here. This is, um, this is Mod Sun's new album. This is, uh, Internet Killed the Rockstar, which I think is a perfect title to what we've been talking about these last couple episodes. And that's, uh, you know, what has happened and, and what can happen to rock music and what can, what can, what rock music can do moving forward. Um, you know, it just, uh, it's a, overall, it's just a great album. It's, it's not as rock centric as tickets to my downfall is um this album definitely has a lot more electronic beats there's a little bit more hip-hop uh, r&b influenced on the album i think it's just that like crossover nature of these like i said this uh of mod sun's new album of machine gun kelly's latest album that can that, that crossover into into rock music, I wonder if that can, if or if that's going to be the kind of the future moving forward for rock music, at least for the next, the next chapter of rock music's history. I guess. Internet killed the the rock star. I think is another one of those albums, just like the first two I talked about, that would be a lot bigger of an album had it not been for the pandemic and the ability to go out and kind of promote this thing and promote their albums. And. Uh, as far as like promotion goes, I know in the, some of the comments on our episode a couple of weeks ago, people brought up the uh, the fact that MTV really doesn't play music anymore, and I think that's a great point to make. Um, you know, because MTV was such a huge part of the transition of music in general, from you know the rock sound in the seventies to to disco to what it was in the early eighties and then the, the rise of hair metal and, and heavy metal and alternative in the, in the nineties and grunge. I think it's a MTV was, well, was the platform for all that. And I think that having that central force, you know, has really left a vacuum in the, the music industry and no one's really kind of stepped up and, and filled that void. And, uh, I think that, uh, a lot of people kind of be, when, when MTV really kind of fell off and, and stopped being that uh, that musical force that it was for so long, 
I think that's when people started kind of drifting to, to other genres and there wasn't that, uh, that focus on anything in particular that MTV was able to kind of make or break careers for a long time. And, uh, you know, there really isn't a, a platform like that out there. And maybe that's another reason why rock music has fallen on hard times. I don't know, that's all I got for you today, guys. Uh, drop me a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. If you have checked out any of these albums or what you think about rock music in, in general. I know it's a, it's a genre that I really enjoy, but, you know, like a lot of other people, I've drifted off to other things over the last, you know, 10 or, or 15 years. And I, I, For a long time, that's really all I kind of listened to was rock music. And I, I've definitely diversified my, my music listening uh, over the last... I'd say five years in particular. And uh, so let me know what you guys think. Uh, drop me a comment. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure you give me the old thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and uh, come back and check out me and Ian this Sunday. Well, that's all I got. Until next time, keep on spinning. Peace.